This week's episode of Lo Fi Podcast is sponsored by No Wave Academy. At NoWaveAcademy.com, you can view an array of online workshops by some of today's best contemporary artists. Their instructors include Mia Bergeron, Paul Christina, Steve Kim, myself, Aaron Westerberg, and many more. So if you use this code at checkout, LOFI-10, that's all caps, L-O-F-I-10, you can get 10% off all online workshops. This is a great resource. They're very well done videos. They were fun to do. They're amazing to watch. And there's a ton you can learn by so many great artists. So take advantage of that while you can. Hello and welcome to episode 12 of Lo-Fi Podcast. I am John Wentz, recording conversations with artists, musicians, and filmmakers from my studio in Paris, France. In this episode, I talk with painter and fellow expat Chris Lieb. As two painters who have lived and left the Bay Area for Europe, we talk about being an American in a foreign country, his origins as an artist, religion and mythology, and much more. From BeAnArt.org, Chris Lieb graduated in anthropology from the University of California, Berkeley, but soon after landed a job as an illustrator. After some study at the Academy of Art in San Francisco and apprenticing with a portrait painter, he began to work as a full-time artist. Featuring casts of astronauts and bonobo chimps, Lieb's meticulously layered and detailed paintings provide his subjects with a corporeal quality that pull us into their narrative and cultural references. And without further delay, Chris Lieb. Uh, yeah, you know, we went to Copenhagen recently, though, and it's um, it's getting built up pretty quick. So it's it's more like uh, it's kind of more like San Francisco now. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, that's such a terrible. That's that's like the black mark on everything now. Yeah, when people God. say it's like San Francisco now, it's just like oh, that bad, huh? Yeah, <laughs> really. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. And have you yeah. have you been back at all? I had, well, I was in the summer. I had to go back to do some visa work. So oh, I probably okay. go back. Uh, it's been once a year. I think I've been out here almost three years now. Um, oh, wow. It's been that long. Yeah, it's okay. longer than I thought. It yeah. really went by quick. Yeah. Um, but every time I go back, man, it, it's changed a little bit more. And it, uh, there, and a lot, it seems like people are leaving exponentially. Yes. Yes. So every year I'm like, oh, you know, to talk to somebody like, you know, the list 10, 15 friends that are gone. Yeah. Yeah. Man. No, it's, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, it looks like Palo Alto now. It's it's just like yeah, a, yeah. It's everything I remember, you know, from way back. You know, it's just there's nothing left. I think uh, I think Muddy Waters is the only thing I le- that's left from the, <laughs> the Mission District. So. <laughs> I don't know. How, I don't know how they survive. Actually, so. yeah, I don't know how anybody does yeah. there. How yeah. long were you guys there in the Bay Area? Um, well, I, I grew up around that area, so um, I grew up down the peninsula, and then <clears throat> I was in San Francisco. Probably, I don't know, close to twenty years, I would guess. Um, oh, okay, I didn't know it was that long. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, we left in two thousand ten, moved to New York, to Brooklyn. And then uh, hmm. came back to uh, Monterey for about three years, and then now we're here. So. That is a very strange jump. How do you go, <laughs> well, how do you go from Brooklyn to Monterey? Yeah, no, my my father, uh, uh, my parents uh, lived in Monterey, and then uh, oh, okay. my father was ill, so we we went back to. to oh man, I'm sorry to hear. Okay. So yeah, and then uh, and then Christina's family, you know, she's from Denmark. Uh, mm-hmm. And, uh, so we, um, we ended up, uh, you know, going, uh, we wanted to be closer. We actually originally thought we'd go to, to Denmark, but they, uh, at the time when we were looking into it, they had this, um, what was it called? The, it was some type of integration rule or, um, I forgot the name of it, but, but basically, um, you had to show like you and your spouse had an uh, attachment rule. That's what it was. Had mm-hmm. an attachment to Denmark. And if you didn't have, you know, an attachment, how would I have an attachment to it? They could potentially, like, say, the the Danish citizen could stay, but your spouse couldn't come in, you know, couldn't stay. And oh, that's weird. Yeah, they they had had that right wing government at the time. And yeah, so, yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's 
I, I think originally it was something like the 28 year rule. Like you had to be in the uh, living in Denmark for 28 years before you could bring your spouse in, which was a way to, you know, <laughs> keep certain people out. They didn't wow, want, right? That's not mildly nationalistic. At no, all. no. <laughs> and so the EU, you know, ruled against it. And yeah. uh, anyway, so they came up with this attachment rule and we didn't know how it was going to play out. And they advised us, Oh, go live in another European country and then come in. So uh, we had been to Berlin a few times. So we thought, well, let's, you know, go there. And then as we thought about it more, we're like, why are we even going to Denmark? So, um, so we ended up moving here. So, yeah. And I, I hear it's just so affordable as yes. well. Yeah. Like I, cause we've been discussing, I mean, I don't know how long Paris is going to last for us. Mm, really? You know, it's very expensive. So right. talking to the, and everybody here recommends Berlin. Yeah. I had a, um, I, re- I was woke up really late, so I over caffeinated. So I'm really fidgety. Oh, there, me too. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Let's caffeine together. Yeah. Um, when I stopped um, drinking energy drinks when I moved here, cause they're so rare. Like I was always drinking Red Bulls back in the States, Oh God! <laughs> but I found one this morning. So I pounded that before <laughs> hopping on here. So now I'm like about to have a heart attack. Oh, great. <laughs> I feel like John Belushi in his last 10 minutes. Uh, but, um, yeah, so Paris is expensive, huh? Yeah, I mean, it's still, uh, uh, in my experience, uh, more affordable than San Francisco, which yeah. is insane. But yeah. For a painter, it is. I mean, yeah. well, it's anybody. I w- we were back in September and we were staying at a place and, and you know, basically it ran out of toilet paper at this place. I went down the street to buy, you know, four rolls of toilet paper. And it was like $6. <laughs> I was like, where's that? In. Uh, Bernal Heights in San Francisco. Oh, in San Francisco. Yeah, no, not in Berlin. <laughs> Six dollars. <laughs> I'm I'm not surprised. Yeah. It is. I went to. Um, I was in the Netherlands in October mm-hmm. at an artist residency, and at that point, I hadn't been back that long because I came back from the U.S. around August, so it just flew by. So I was still kind of in U.S. mindset. Yeah, and I was shocked how affordable. Everything is in the Netherlands. Like the first time I went grocery shopping, it's like, my God, it's like half the price of the U S you know? No, it's crazy. I like Berlin is so cheap. I mean, it's, uh, the food is really cheap going out to dinner. You know, you can get a a whole pizza for six Euro kind of thing. You know, it's just, so yeah, it's been really nice. I mean, it's a nice lifestyle. I don't know. Again, I don't know how long it's going to last here either. I mean, the, there's startups and I know Google was trying to move into the neighborhood. And so you think in Berlin, <laughs> we'll see. I mean, like I'm going, um, I'm not sure if it's April or May. I'm getting my dates messed up. I think it might be the beginning of May. Oh, right. You got a show here. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I want to try and stay a little bit longer, um, just to hang out. Like I'd love to see you guys. Yeah. Um, just check it out. I don't yeah. know. I mean, it's where everything's up in the air. I mean, ever since, Again, like the San Francisco, I don't know how it's been for you guys, but once it started going up, I feel like I'm shuffling all over the place. Yeah. yeah. You know? No, I I think I was uh, talking to Christina about it the other day. Like, I think I've moved, like, I counted up. It was like over 20 times, you know, since I moved to San Francisco originally. (laughs) Wow. It was just, I mean, I had these weird events in that, you know, the first place I was living, like the the guy blew his house up like two doors down, you know, and then there was the dot com boom, and you know, it's just like yeah, one thing yeah. after another. So, um, yeah, so we we moved here. And we're like, oh, we're not going anywhere for a while. So, yeah, that must feel nice. I mean, especially yeah. as in, do you find like, because I don't personally, I don't mind being quasi nomadic. But no, for me, the thing that's difficult is being an artist. Like you have to have your studio space. Yeah. Working yeah. space. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, well, it was funny cause in San Francisco I had, um, I had a studio space at Art Explosion for a number of years and then it had another mm-hmm. building. So I always kind of had that, but my housing situation was always just a mess, you know, it was, um, but yeah, here it's kind of nice. I mean, we're kind of settled. We have, you know, we can work in the house if we want to. We have enough room for that. And then, um, you know, I, I found a studio space, uh, you know, it's a shared studio um, just down. I walk down the canal a few blocks, you know, get a coffee, oh, nice. yeah, go yeah. to the studio. You know, it's it's great. And in Northern Light, you know, it's, it's really nice. So, um, so it doesn't feel like that kind of... Um, 
a situation, but, but when I was moving a lot, um, yeah, the, I mean the studio, finding a studio space was always like the most important. As long as that was settled, I felt okay. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You could live in your car or whatever, but <laughs> as yeah, long as you have a studio space. Yeah. I've done that. Yeah. yeah it's, yeah. it's the anxiety Likewise. comes with not being able to work. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, and it's funny cause don't you find like, um, I was trying to explain this to somebody the other day, like, um, it, like artists portrayed in, in movies. Mm-hmm. Cause what people don't understand is like about the studio spaces, then that comes with its own complications. Cause our most important thing is light. Yes. And that's the thing people, and you always see that. It's funny when I see like artists in movies, they're right. always working in the worst lighting conditions. Yeah. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> yeah. A little tiny window and this like, yeah, yeah. You know, the cavern. paintings in the yeah. dark. Yeah. <laughs> at a bad angle and yeah. stuff. So people don't understand that. Like, can't you work anywhere? It's like, no, I can't. Really. You got to have good light. That's what we do is almost a hundred percent based on light. Yeah. I have to have Northern light and a skylight and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, not, not that no. bad. I've known those painters. Yes. <laughs> Although nothing beats Northern light, man. Once you, you, I've had it once in, I think it was in school. We had a room that had a Northern, um, skylight, Mm. man, that is something that to, to it really is nice. Go after. Yeah. Yeah. When you get that, it's like, it's hard to go back to anything else. And like Western light was always the worst for me. It's like, especially because I, you know, I'd start usually in the afternoon. I'm kind of one of those people who sleeps till 12, you know, or preferably uh-huh. <laughs> it stays yeah, yeah. up till four, you know, <laughs> but, but <laughs> that Western light, um, it just, uh, yeah, it's just blinding. Yeah. You know, I had a studio like that and it was just, it's horrible, but, um, yeah, Northern lights. Great. Just- so, hey, you know, that's funny. Cause I never thought about that looking at your work and that just kind of jumped in my head now because mm-hmm. I don't work so detailed. Ah. Um, but I used to, and it's just really dawning on me again, like how much more important the light is, the consistency of light when you're working more detailed, because you have more subtle temperature shifts, right. um, your values, like, especially what you do, like, um, like you look at the muzzles of apes or the hair, like the, the value shifts are so much more subtle. How do you manage your light? Um, you know, we've been using, um, cause Christina also does a lot of really detailed work and it's, uh, right. um, or actually she's kind of a, a mix, you know, she'll a mixed, detail yeah. and big areas. But, um, yeah, with mine, I definitely need to have a pretty consistent light. So I've, I've, I used to use like, um, some par halogen bulbs. And I always have a particular spacing, but here I, I didn't know what to, you know, I didn't know what kind of bulbs to get. So, um, uh, but I did find these, these, um, uh, bulbs that kind of imitate daylight so and they've been pretty good but it's it's uh i have to use two or three of them to get the room kind of lit up enough if i work at night so mm-hmm. uh, but yeah it, it seems to work pretty pretty well um and i i also have those uh jeweler's goggles if i get really detailed so <laughs> oh really you use those yeah i i okay. Um, you know, I mean, I'm getting older, so my eyesight isn't as good as it used to be when I was, you know, my twenties and thirties. So sure. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, for like really detailed stuff, I'll, I'll get in there, especially, especially lately last, I don't know, few years I've, I've been doing so many small paintings that it's, uh, I mean, I have to use them when, you know, doing these little, you know, eight inch by eight inch paintings, that kind of thing. Right. And still yeah. maintaining a lot of detail yeah. makes it even yeah. more difficult. Yeah. And why, I, why the shift to smaller works? Um, well, I think because we were, uh, moving so much, you know, we were going back and forth and we didn't know how long we were going to stay in Monterey. So we didn't, you know, we were kind of working out of a garage. We didn't really set anything up and, um, and we knew we were going to be moving over here. So it was just a matter of, you know, not, not, uh, knowing what was coming, what wasn't and mm-hmm. sending out to a lot of shows. It was just much easier to, to work that size. So, um, but actually now I, I, now that I have a studio and we're settled, I mean, I'm, I'm actually, uh, gained some stuff ready to start working bigger. So kind of miss that. Uh, nice. Yeah. Do you have a preferred size? Like, do you feel more comfortable in one range? I or think, not even just comfort, but I mean, yeah. just a preference. I, I think I actually prefer it either, either small or actually pretty large. The kind of mid sizes I'm always a little uncomfortable with. 
like anything like that. <laughs> Interesting. I don't know why, but but it's uh, <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, I think when you're working small, you're kind of working as like, okay, it's going to be kind of a portrait of that chimp or whatever. Um, and uh, then yeah, if it's yeah. really large, it's a full narrative, which is kind of fun. But when it's in between, it's kind of is is it a narrative? Is it going to be portrait? You know, I mean, it's you're kind of limited. I, I feel kind of limited in, in doing like a, a larger narrative because then I have to shrink down the scale of the figures. Oh, and, okay, okay. Yeah, and if I do a more portraity kind of thing, then it's um, you know more of a. Uh, there's a lot of space. I'm not sure what to do with. <laughs> I guess. <you> know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and do you do you consider your work more narrative? Or do you prefer it to be more narrative? I mean, that's weird because you do both sizes. So like yeah. you say, that's going to dictate in a sense. But. Um, I, I do prefer the more narrative pieces, although um, I, I tend to do more, you know, the kind of portraity, uh, you know, like chimp with astronaut, Madonna child kind of setting. Yeah. Um, but it's, there are a lot more work. I mean, there are a lot, you know, there's a lot that goes into those. So it's, I mean, the reality is you just produce less of them. So, um, right. Yeah, I've done some that are small and they're they're fun to do, but uh, um, but I you know I've had a lot of demand for the the chimp and the astronaut thing, so um, that's kind of been dictating a lot of a uh, lot of the work the last few years. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I yeah. it's since I've known you, that's the work that I've been familiar with. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's um, yeah, what 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 size do you prefer? You you're kind of you kind of do some larger scales. I mean, you've been doing buildings now. Yeah, I, yeah, I'd like that. Yeah, I've been doing murals, which I like. Um, I don't know. I I think I'm kind of the same as you. I, I don't like mid so much. I find yeah. it's weird. I never thought about it, but I think you've completely nailed it. It's like if it's kind of what I do, like the portraiture stuff. Mid's just so boring. It's yeah, the negative space. It's hard to make it that interesting. Yeah. Um, so I'd, I'd like to go back to larger, but, and I hate to even talk like this, but it's, <laughs> you have to think like the, the, you have to consider market yep. at some point and yeah. it's hard to, man, like I get anxiety sometimes like investing that amount of time in a large piece. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. okay, that means I don't get any money for the month, which right. means, yeah. you know, all yeah. kinds of problems. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, they do take so much time. I mean, I, <clears throat> Especially for you. I mean, for me, it's nothing like you. Yeah. I mean, it is a lot of, um, I mean, it can be six months or a year on a, on a really big painting. Right. And it's, um, wow. Well, I mean, there's other things going on, but <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Of course. Um, but yeah, if you're investing that much time and it just sits in a, you know, a storage room at a gallery, <laughs> it's, it's mm -hmm. not going to be a, a very worthwhile. So, um, yeah, I mean that's another consideration with the, with the small work. You know, it's it's just easier to move around and and sell really too. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's uh, uh, I do miss it. I, I worked for a, a company in in Manhattan for a little while, um, and they would do mural size and like that kind of corporate lobby art and stuff. And mm -hmm. you know, it looks like a Rothko, but it's not. <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that was really fun. You know, you get these projects were the really huge scale pieces and um uh, you know have a few days to do it and just you know knock them out but it was fun to work that big but again it's uh for what i do it just takes you know it's it's a big time uh time commitment so yeah, yeah. do you find like doing that was there anything that you brought back new to your studio practice uh you mean the, at the company in new york yeah yeah um yeah, I think I New York was really it was a really good experience I think living there because I think prior to that in San Francisco I was always kind of I don't know fiddling around in, in a sense in my head with the you know what's this concept going to be you know what am I doing here blah 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 right and in New York there just wasn't the time for it you know you you really have to just okay this is what I'm doing I'm committing to it if it doesn't work the next one will and you just knock them out you know and mm -hmm. so working for that company and, and, uh, some other projects, it was, you know, you just have to get it done. You know, here's a sheet of paper, eight by 10, make it, you know, 30 feet by 20 feet. And you've got four days, <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> um, 
And, you know, people were, there's just a lot of movement in New York. People were just, uh, um, you know, every time you see somebody that you know, they're like, oh, what show are you in? What are you doing? Da, da, da. What are you mm, working yeah, on? Yeah, yeah. And you've got to produce. And so I think that experience kind of got me past any kind of, um, you know, the whole like self doubt and stuff, which you kind of, at least in San Francisco at the time, you know, there was kind of a luxury to, to doubt yourself and doubt your work and question it and all that. You didn't have that luxury in New York. And I think it was a, <clears throat> um, you know, a really good thing to go through because, you know, it, it just, uh, kind of got rid of that. <laughs> you will. Yeah. The, yeah. Like that, um, I forgot where that comes from. It was that saying paralysis by analysis Yeah, totally. and you just start overthinking and next thing you know, you're just staring at the wall <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for three hours. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I, I definitely had times at least in San Francisco where, uh, you know, I did that and it's, I think it's also the, you know, the studio spaces I was in in San Francisco, you'd have, you know, there'd be a, maybe in a pulp building, there'd be three or four people working as yeah. artists, right? Who were there regularly, but everybody else wasn't. So you, you kind of left art on, explosion, uh, art explosion, um, <laughs> Bryant street. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was at art explosion for years and it was the same. Oh really? Yeah, <laughs> when yeah. were you there? Um, maybe two, 2000, Oh man, twelve? Oh, okay. maybe a little before yeah. that, two thousand eleven yeah. for a couple of years. Yeah, so I know what you mean. Yeah, and there was probably twenty five studios on the floor. <laughs> I know, I know, it's terrible. <laughs> yeah, no, it's ridiculous. And, and it, you know, it was that type of environment. Like the second place I was at um, on Bryant Street. You know, we had a really great space, but it was like, you know, each s studio spaces uh, they were kind of closed off, so you might have a few artists in each one. Mm -hmm. but you're just sitting in there alone all day. And of course, yeah, I'm going to start questioning my work. You know, and like, you know, there was no, I don't know. You just didn't have the energy in San Francisco, I guess. Like, compared yeah, to yeah. Here. So, but. So then I guess that begs the question then, like, how do you think Berlin's affected your studio practice? Um, hmm. I, good question. I, uh, I mean, I think, uh, probably when we got to New York and, and things kind of started to roll um, forward with a lot of shows and, and, and so forth. So I, I just was always working. And so I think when we got here, in fact, I got here and we had to settle and deal with all the bureaucracy and everything. So I was behind. I'm still kind of behind <laughs> trying to catch up. Okay. Um, so I, I, my studio practice is just catching up at this point. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know if it's, uh, I, I mean, I think my daily life here is a little more relaxed, but, you know, I'm pretty motivated after, you know, I've been doing this for decades, so it's yeah, it's, yeah. it's not really a problem for me, but um, but it's, I, I could see how this place could be a little bit of a problem. There's always, like, things going on, parties and bars and everything <laughs> everywhere that if right. you just showed up here as an artist and try, you're trying to get started, I could see there's potential for pitfalls you know <laughs> but, <laughs> but what do you um, think outside of um then outside of this just the basic work mm -hmm. the the physicality of working does moving around much affect you because i find like for yeah. me I, it took me a while to notice like there would be subtle things like i would just notice my color palette like my preferences would change like things i was very unaware of when i moved around a lot do you experience anything like that yeah um I know I, it does take me a while to kind of get comfortable in a, in a space, you know, like every time I move to a new space and it's uh, several months, but I've noticed since we've been here that I'm using a lot of greens and blues, like just it's dominating. <laughs> I don't know why, yeah. but I mean, there's a lot of trees in Berlin. I mean, maybe that's what's going on, but, but um, yeah, it's been, I uh, probably noticed it a couple months ago and I was like, uh, oh, this is kind of, <laughs> A little odd, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe you, or what are you finding uh, in Paris? Are you? Well, in, in Paris, I've been doing. That's when I started doing a lot more collage work. Oh yeah, and, that's right. I really like. Yeah, those, and I think that came from um, two things. A lot of the it being in the metros a lot, but then mm. you know, I'm sure I, they probably have in Berlin, but I just never been there. But you know, in Paris, where it's everything's pasted, they still use like pasted billboards. Ah, yeah. 
And there's everything covered are, in graffiti and stickers there. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then those billboards will literally get like three inches thick and yeah. just fall off the wall. Right. And, it, and they look like beautiful abstract paintings, but yeah. I didn't really consider it at first. So I'm something I'm talking a lot to artists about because I'm really interested in, and I don't know if you get like this, like I, I constantly like throughout the years try to reevaluate the, the role of art in mm. society and maybe the role of the artist. And I'm kind of interested in the idea of like, um, artist as a conduit, like what are sure. the subconscious things that an artist picks up? Right. So, so how do you find like, um, I mean, do you evaluate yourself, uh, your own process that way is like, how do you figure out what those things are that you're picking up on? Like, is it through sketchbooks or is it? You know um, I mean? Yeah, I know. I know what you mean. I, yeah. I think I don't think about it until the end. Like there's like a right. body of work. Yeah. Um, you know, when you got to hit that deadline and then you see right, right, right. Cause the last one, when I did uh, the last show, it didn't really hit me till everything was on the wall and I showed up in the show and I was like, Oh my God, it looks like, Oh, that's what it works Paris. about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 And they asked you for your artist statement. Right. Prior. You're like, yeah. hey, can I, can I rewrite that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I've had that happen so many times. It's just, I, I, I find like sometimes, uh, sometimes I'm doing like uh, just kind of random sketches in my sketchbook because I, I draw a lot out of my head, so I'm always like yeah. putting stuff in there. And it's, um, but then like you look back on it after a year or something, you're like, oh, this is like the the kind of vein of. Um, that I was kind of going down. This is the ideas I thought I was going for this idea, but here it is. And I kind of find that helps, uh, but, but, um, to kind of weed out what the ideas, if you will, the conduits are of, of um, but the, uh, yeah, I've had that happen where I did a show and it was just like, I thought I was, uh, that's the cat in the background. <laughs> we don't have a child, <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I I did a show. Actually, it was a show in here in Berlin, and I um, some, some years back, and I had this whole idea of this what I was, uh, you know, had, it was all about. And afterwards, I was like, "Oh man, this is just totally different." When the show was up, I was like, "This is totally different than what I, you know, expected it. You know, what I intended." And yeah. It's, uh, you can cut this part. I'm all rambling. <laughs> so, no, no, no. It's all really good. No. Yeah. So, but yeah, I, I find that is pretty much always the case. I, I, in fact, that's what always kind of, it kind of, um, when, when I go to these art shows and you see like this, this grand artist statement and, you know, especially with the more conceptual work and you're kind of like looking at it going like, uh, I, I'm reading the statement, but this is not what the show is about. You know? It's yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know how many times that happens, but yeah, I've seen that quite a bit as yeah, well. Yeah. And it did, um, cause I, I'm sorry, I don't know a lot of like your, sure. your background in, in terms of like schooling. Cause I, I know we talked before, like you did some classes at uh, Academy of art. I right. think it was, right. um, is that the extent? And then the rest is self-taught. Um, no, cause your so, background's actually anthropology, right? Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I, I went to Berkeley for anthropology and then um, uh, kind of had thought of either going on in that or law school, or whatever. And I, I ended I ended up getting a job in illustration kind of by accident. Um, but I, I did. My, my father was a, a high school art teacher and uh, uh, taught some other subjects, too. But he was a very good artist. And uh, so I, I drew a lot as a child, you know. So, I, I mean, I always had that kind of as a a little bit of a hobby in the background. And, um, uh, after I did the illustration job, I realized I didn't have a portfolio <laughs> like the other people <laughs> I worked with. So, uh, so it was a little difficult to get a, another illustration job after that. So I did, um, I worked for a company. I did kind of some programming stuff and then, um, jump ship on that, uh, after a few months and went, moved to San Francisco and, and took some art classes, uh, with, uh, at the Academy. So like, uh, I jumped into head and hands and, uh, Craig Nelson's painting class and a couple others. Shout out to Craig. Craig. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then I had this opportunity to uh, study with a guy, uh, who was uh, trained, uh, in Italy. He was a, a Renaissance style painter. Um, I always say he was a Renaissance painter, but <laughs> he would be quite old. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, 
anyways, he, uh, he did, you know, really, uh, you know, the old school technique. And so this was back in the early nineties. So, you know, before all these ateliers, there were a few ateliers, I think in Florence at that time, but, uh-huh. um, so it, it, I apprenticed with him for about a year and a half and then, Oh uh, man, that's great. Yeah, it was really good. It was, um, uh, kind of a, uh, well, really drama filled studio, but it was, <laughs> it was a good place to learn. And he, um, he was a really good guy. And I, uh, yeah, I learned a lot from him. So. Okay. Yeah. That yeah. makes a lot more sense. Cause I, I know when I, you told me about that, like being at the Academy, you know, the stigma is, and I went to the Academy is like, everybody's work looks the same. Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> yeah the purple yours shadows. Yeah, yours, <laughs> yours definitely looks more Renaissance, like in terms of lighting and backgrounds and right, posing right. a lot of the Pieta style, um, compositions and stuff. Yeah. So that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I I did like the purple shadows though when I <laughs> showed up. <at> the, <laughs> yeah. How can I work yeah. that into these paintings? <laughs> yeah, the purple shadows. <laughs> okay, I love the academy. Yeah. Um, and I was oh man, what was I was forgetting why I was asking that. There's a point to me asking that question. Um, oh, because when you're talking about um, statements and stuff. Because, you know, the, 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 there was always a joke between art students when I was in, in art school. Because you have the three main schools there, right? You have CCA, right. which was CCAC, yeah. the Academy, and SFAI. And the joke was like, what was it? CCAC was, um, was it paint first, ask questions later? <laughs> or no, no, figure out what have your idea then paint or something. Hmm. The Academy was just like, don't ask questions, just paint. <laughs> and SFAI was just think about painting. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And I don't know, you know, the stereotypes are funny things. The Academy one was true. Yeah. Um, but that's the other thing is like with your narrative, it seemed very unacademy like as well, but I guess it makes sense because you're drawing a lot from your background as in anthropology. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, um, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I went to the academy just to get some technical training, um, and then I actually had studied with the uh, in the Renaissance style, you know, um, and then went back to the academy because I felt like I had too much of a formula, you know, oh, this okay. kind of layering of you know, start with the grisaille and then layer on, and um, and so I kind of wanted to just learn some a la prima techniques and just practice that. So I took a couple more classes there, but yeah, I mean, the academy was always. Um, like for technical stuff, it was, it was good, but it, there was, I mean, there was no concept ever. No, zero. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. Just, uh, and That's I, what we always get criticized about. Yeah. So, I mean, at Berkeley, you know, it's, it's more, um, it, it, the undergrad is kind of preparation for graduate school, basically at, at Berkeley. Right. So you're, right. you're getting a lot of kind of theoretical, uh, groundwork. Um, and you know, so it, it, I mean, I kind of felt like I had some of that going into the UK. So it, it was nice. Yeah. But, it, um, but I did take a couple of art classes at, uh, at Berkeley, which were rather int- <laughs> devoid of anything. Um, <laughs> really? In what way? Well, so this was, you know, the late eighties. So it was, uh, the, I took a, what did I take? I took a composition class mm-hmm. and a figure drawing class. I remember the figure drawing class, like, you know, I'd, I'd be trying really hard to draw the figure and we'd get these assignments like, you know, take one of the figures you drew in class and put it in an environment and so on. And so I tried really hard to make this, you know, really realistic figure in an environment, whatever. And then, and then you know, they'd come and go, I really like that smudge you did in the corner. <laughs> so like, Fuck off. So, <laughs> Just cut that piece out and frame uh, it. Yeah. I remember we, had, we did this one assignment. I got all these figures in the room, you know, and... And teacher asked, like, oh, so what um, What problems did you have with this assignment? I'm like, well, I just, because they were different figures from different drawings, such, I was like, I just couldn't figure out where the light source should be. And the teacher just, like, flipped her lid. She's like, oh, my God, we are so past things like a light source. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I was dying to go to the academy at that oh, point. <laughs> yeah, there just needs to be an in-between, right? Don't yeah, you think? Like, yeah, yeah. To you know, that reminds me of um, I always think about uh, what was it? it was John Waters' film um, 
Pecker. Did you ever see Pecker? I never saw it. I know the film you're talking about. I, I oh, yeah. There, there's, there's a character in there who's a blind photographer. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a scene where I think it's where he's introduced or they're at a, no, they're at a party or something. He's going around just, he just shoots pictures wherever, obviously, because he's blind. <laughs> but he goes, he says, no more light meters, no more focusing, <laughs> you know, things like that. And just starts shooting pictures That's everywhere. Great. And it really, when I hear those stories and I've experienced similar things, I always think of that. And even in the opposite, like, I was told at the Academy by an instructor, um, doesn't matter what you're painting. He's like, just make a painting and sell it. Don't, right. think. <laughs> yeah. I was literally told. So it works in the opposite direction too. I'm like, really? Right. Don't think just paint and sell. Okay. Right. Right. Two ends of the spectrum. Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. No, it's, it's funny. The Academy, like, it's like, okay, make, I remember talking about composition or something. And they were talking about like, avoid the target painting and do the, you know, look at the composition this way, blah, blah, blah. But then in the end it was, I don't remember who said it, but it was like, yeah, but the thing about a target painting is, you know, where you center it, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah, got yeah. all your focus in on that that painting, you know, high contrast, reds, whatever. And it's like, well, if you're competing against all these other painters on the wall, you kind of want that target painting. <laughs> <It's like, laughs> kind of does stand out. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. It's, I mean, it, it's, it's kind of funny because like you, you have some really it's commercial, but you get some really good advice that you kind of need to survive in a sense. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. But you, you know, if you're going to do something more with it, you gotta, you gotta find other sources. <laughs> you, know? you do definitely. Yeah. 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 yeah so. I agree. There's no perfect art school that I'm seeing there. You know, there's one, um, and I can't re remember the, the, the school, but I saw this BBC documentary on art and they broke it down. Like there was a episode on drawing. Then there's an episode on painting huh. an episode on sculpture. But, um, in the drawing one, the school they were highlighting in the UK, um, it was really fascinating because I forget the instructor's name, but she was very technically savvy, mm. but also very conceptually sound. And her approach to teaching the class was don't teach one method, but also don't just highlight concepts. So she would work individually with a student and be like, what is it you're trying to say? What's your idea? And then find a technique ah. so that they still became technically sound. Yeah. But it was at the same time facilitating and kind of fostering the idea of concept. Right. Um, that school probably didn't last very long, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> but it sounded amazing. Yeah. Well, it, it's funny too, because like you get some schools that are so concept heavy and, and maybe they get some people who are even technically sound coming in, but, but they're producing these, um, I'm getting a little bit off topic here, but, um, but you know, they'll produce MFAs that go out and have shows and so on. And it's kind of like, you know, maybe the technique matches what they're going to say or whatever, but you get this kind of promotion, like as if, you know, this 25 year old is going to have a lot to say, you know, and it's, they don't even have experience yes. in the world. And that just drives me bananas. It's like, yeah, at that point you're still learning how to, to, you know, well, what your experiences are, what con you know, you're still becoming that conduit, if you will. And the, you know, what techniques and so forth to, say that message, uh, in the way you want it, want to say it, or the most effective way to say it, um, you know, they're still being developed as well. And it's, um, I don't know. I, I think sometimes it can be a disservice. There's, there are some people that age that, that definitely pull it off, but, but, you know, it, it almost feels like it's, um, uh, uh it can kind of, uh, stamped out of a machine in a sense out of those mm -hmm. a lot of schools nowadays. So, but, yeah. No, I, yeah, I think you're right. I think that it, I remember at one point being very kind of, um, I don't know if discourage is the right mm -hmm. word, but I kind of naively pursued art, not real in, in, in the idea of that, oh, maybe even overly romanticize that it's the one thing that is just going to get better with age. Like the more you learn, the more life experience you have the more you're going to have to say, which is true. But at the same time, I was very naive of the market. I wasn't aware of like, you're saying like the art star, right. like even just reading, I was reading uh, art net yesterday, you know, of all the new 25 year old art stars. And you're like, <laughs> okay. It's everywhere. I mean, it's on, yeah. you know, yeah. not complaining, just observing. <laughs> Damn art stars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They'll see what's coming to them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wait till you turn 30. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Has been, um, yeah, no, it's, uh, I, I guess it's in every field though, really. I mean, yeah, I'm sure there's, well, I was going to say that, but 
I guess in other fields like finance, you probably, you definitely prove yourself, right? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It it definitely in all of the arts. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm curious, how did, um, I'm, I'm not intentionally avoiding, but I don't, I never want to, you know, in doing this, I'm really hesitant asking people too much about their art because I know that everybody's done a million interviews, um, probably talking about your art and you ideas ask about the it. chimps, right? No, I'm not about the chimps because I, I'm, no, no, I don't want to get totally okay. into that. It's like if you ask me, like, why don't you paint mouths? Right. I'm just more curious, like, if it was a natural, um, progression to, to meld the, the anthropology. Cause I find like ideas and, you know, style and things like that for some people, it's a very natural thing that just happens and other people will struggle their entire life with it. Yeah. And it, you, you've kind of developed this thing. That's a very signature. Like I know your paintings when I see them, they're very interesting. And it seems like it was almost flawless in the way that you, you kind of put together your life experience with them. Was um, it, uh, you know, it, so I, I started off doing, uh, I started off doing garish still lifes and then <laughs> you know, more kind of dark uh-huh. still lifes and portraits. Um, and then probably, you know, 2009, 2010, somewhere in there. Um, <clears throat> I, I kind of, you know, I kind of hit, hit a, a, I don't know what you call it, a roadblock if you will. But um, I just kind of had it with, with, you know, kind of more straight up realism. And um, mm. I had a lot of stuff in my sketchbooks that were more exaggerated, more, narrative interesting stuff so i uh i kind of went into that and i i actually was starting off um doing uh cosmonauts and kind of distorted cosmonauts and that's kind of how i kind of branched into um i guess more narrative types Mm -hmm. of work and those are the ones that are kind of like in a renaissance background yeah elongated heads yeah Yeah. i really like those yeah thanks yeah so i i was doing those uh for a while and then um Actually, it was kind of ironic because it, <laughs> I had these cosmonauts going back into Western civilization and sabotaging things. So I don't know if there's <laughs> <laughs> foreshadowing. I don't know, but um, <laughs> a premonition. Um, but anyways, and then I think it was. Uh, I think there was a, a. I had just met Irena at Wonderland actually, and she invited me into. Uh, one of her anniversary shows and I thought, mm-hmm. okay, Wonderland, you know, so I did a, a queen of hearts costume and I put an astronaut helmet on it and I started to do a series of those. And then she had that, a show at 111 Mina and uh, asked me to be in that. And I started thinking if I was going to do a Pieta, I was going to this astronaut, you know, holding a chimp. And, um, and I think the chimp, cause the chimp had shown up in a, f- a couple of still lifes in the past. And of course the anthropology background, I mean, I had an interest in them, but I, you know, when I reversed it and had the chimp holding like a baby astronaut and the Madonna child thing, I thought, and I started to paint it. I was like, oh, you know, this, this really kind of works. And I, for a lot of reasons, but, um, but yeah, I, I, it, I mean, I don't think it was seamless, you know, how it got there, but it, um, it, I mean, I guess maybe it was just, <laughs> um, it just kind of, you know, resonated with me again, I think because of my interest, uh, my past interests, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I, I think for me, it took a long time to get, uh, to kind of give myself freedom to do what I wanted to do. I was really kind of stuck in, um, probably the same thing that happens to a lot of people at the academy where they come out and they're just landscape painters or whatever, right? Um, mm-hmm. But to have that kind of freedom to get away from still life and portraiture and, and everything being rendered exactly and so on from what you see, you know. Did, did that answer the question? <laughs> no, it does. Yeah, I mean, okay. there's no, there's no right or wrong answer to it. Um, it one thing in, in looking at your work that I've always wondered, and this, this might be picking a little bit too personally, sure. but cause I, I think in what makes a good work for me is it kind of becomes a self reflection. Yeah. And so like when I've always looked at your paintings, I think there's the obvious, um, or not, I mean, obvious in like a negative way, but there's, there's an obvious allusion to science. And I've always kind of felt with some of your work, um, I know the things that you've said about it, but I don't know if you've ever said this, but I've always felt this kind of like, um, a tug of war between faith and science Mm. between with your work. Like for me, like looking at some of the chimps that kind of represents the natural world, um, you know, uh, obviously, obviously the astronauts are kind of a science thing. Um, but given your background in anthropology, I, I, 
assuming you're you're uh, a Darwinist. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. that's a safe assumption. Yeah. I don't know why I'm trying to be overly careful right now. So. <laughs> Well, I, I do know why. I mean, yeah, I, I, sure. I, I, the reason why I do, I do kind of like walk in eggshells with this is I don't know your experience, but I've found, and this isn't a judgment, but um, artists tend to be very, in my experience, very choosy about where they draw the line between faith and science. Hmm. And even faith can be anything. I mean, it's like, am I Wiccan? Am I Christian? Am I just believing in ghosts? Like, I, I hardly find anyone that's on the hard science end. You know what I mean? Well, hmm, that's because for yeah. me, like I'll just throw it for me, I'm complete atheist across the board. Yeah, I believe in nothing. Yeah, absolutely, and that's terrible in a lot of ways. Um, but I don't find that with a lot of people that I know. So I'm, I, you know, I'm yeah. that I'm really just kind of uh, stumbling. Yeah, I don't know, trying I, to find out where you lie on this. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I'm not uh, religious and uh, believing in ghosts and <laughs> you know whatever. <laughs> um, but it's. Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, definitely, I'm, I'm a Darwinist. I'm uh, science, you know. I <laughs> rational thinking. I'm all for it. Um, you know, as far as the bigger questions of the universe, I mean, I have no fucking idea. I mean, I, I the computer simulation uh, video game thing is is kind of having a that this whole world <laughs> is just a video oh, game. Like, uh, who is it? Nick Boston? Yeah, I, I can't remember the name of the guy. Yeah, that's yeah. him. I'm, I'm really yeah. into that idea. Yeah. I mean, that, that to me makes more sense. than, than yeah. the, you know, the, um, I mean, the religions are, you know, they're more a reflection of our psychology, right? I mean, it's, mm-hmm. um, you know, it, it's like when you, when you say, okay, what, think about God, what is God like to you? And it's like, and who else does that God remind you of? It's going to be your dominant parent, right? Your father, whoever dominant adult was when you were a child. It's that's what your conception of God's going to be, right? Mm-hmm. If, if you have one, um, and you know, you look at the old mythologies, blah blah. They all have the same kind of repetition, and you know, it's same characters. And, you know, it's uh, so yeah. It's uh, I, I mean, I, I think as far as religion goes or myths, if you will, mm-hmm. um, go, you know, there, we take the Joseph Campbell route. I mean, I was just going to mention that. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's their archetypes, they're, they're guides for us. And, and they do, you know, depending on how long you've lived as an adult, you will, you will come across and probably more so in the near future, will come across events that are going to be very difficult. And sometimes looking to those myths, you know, if you, give you a sort of uh, guidance in a sense. They, they're they kind of the wisdom of the ages, you know, of how to maybe kind of generally handle certain things, at least uh, mm-hmm. how to look yeah. view them. And so, I mean, I think they're important that way, but, but to view them kind of literally is, I, I mean, to view these angels and, you know, whatever as, as literal, you might as well just take Apollo and, you know, I don't know, Gilgamesh, whatever, whatever myth you want to take and, and take it quite literally. Um, it's kind of on par, but um, now beyond that, I don't know, maybe there is something out there, but I, I you know, I'm not, I, what can I do about it? You know, well, well you're going <laughs> to so, know one day. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> like, remember that radio broadcast you had? with <laughs> John <laughs> That, that is kind of the funny Take thing. Take the about stairs it. down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it is a funny thing to kind of postulate. I was talking something about this the other day. Like, because when you think about it, it's kind of that stoner thought of like, you're, it's the one thing you're guaranteed in life. Right. You're going to, you're going to find out if there's life after this. Right, right. Yeah. But I also wondered at times, you know, I've struggled with this idea of do, and maybe this is such a simpleton way of thinking, but do artists, do you need to believe in some kind of magic? in mm. order to be an artist. And I don't, you know what I mean? I don't mean that quite literally. You yeah. Have to yeah, believe, sure. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You have to be kind of naive <laughs> in a way. I yeah. mean, you have to be able to have those, that lens of like to look out at everything that's inspiring you and say, right. it, it's far bigger than me. There's some, some, some magic, but you need to be in awe of it. It's like the idea of the sublime. Cam, Campbell talked about that right. a lot, the idea of awe, the sublime. And I think it, it's a little bit hard to achieve when you become hard science. 
Right, right. I mean, yeah. Except when you look out into the universe, like yeah, I, if I look at like images from Kepler or something, I'm like, okay, now I'm completely in awe. Right. But you look out at like, you know, a city and you're like, okay, we're just a bunch of, we're functioning chemicals reacting to other functioning chemicals. Right, right, right. <laughs> a bunch of cells. Right, right. Yeah. I it's mean, hard to get a little inspired by that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I mean, there is a, well, I mean, that can be inspiring too. Right? No, good you know, point, like, actually. Good point. But, yeah. but, um, yeah, I mean, I think there, yeah, there has to be, well, I mean, we're, you know, we're, we can talk about science all day long and maybe there are some people who can really cut themselves off from their emotions and, and just be, you know, hard about it, if you will. But, but, um, you know, we're, we're primates, we're emotional, you know, and we, we, that's part of our makeup. So I, I think you're going to have emotional reactions to these things. I mean, um, it's actually, a, yeah, it's a, it's a kind of a, a difficult question, but I mean, I think you, as an artist, you have to have, it's kind of almost a combination of that side. I mean, it, of both sides rather that, um, I mean, in a way, just the actual physical act of doing it, right. You have to be, have a technical skill. You have to kind of, in a sense, have a science skill of it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and you, and you're also, uh, bringing concept and, and, and and essentially emotion to that canvas right and it's kind of that synthesis of emotion through this technical act to put it onto canvas and i um i'm now lost from the question what was the question <laughs> so you're Sorry. about like an artist having to believe in magic or yeah the idea I, of the sublime yeah i i think in the beginning i definitely had more of a um uh a kind of emotional um inspiration i guess uh reaction or inspiration uh to wanting to paint in the sense of uh um you know i could look at something and just feel like really emotional about it and want to mm -hmm. you know um and i i i definitely think there, there was a sense of a belief of something more in this head of greater importance you know mm -hmm. and i i don't um I guess I'm at a point too where I'm, I'm kind of questioning like what's the, how useful is art in a sense, right? Um, really? Are you do? Yeah. I mean, I, I do go through that from time yeah. to time. Like what, what's the point of that? I mean, it's just some, some crap on canvas, right? <laughs> in a way, uh, on one level it is. On right? one level yeah. that's for sure. Yeah. And what's, you know, with all the things going on in the world, like what's, what's the point of doing this? Um, on the other hand, you know, it is, it is a, um, well, I mean, there's there's a lot of aspects to it. It's, uh, you know, it is a record of what's going on now, um, at, at a sort of emotional level, um, but also, um, you know, a sort of uh, kind of physical artifact of what's going on and uh, mm -hmm. um, and telling the story of what's going on now. But um, it does, you know, you hear from clients every now and then, like it it gives them a sense of relief, and it's, um. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I um, boy, I'm really rambling on this question a bit. Um, <laughs> it's a big question. Yeah, it is. Where, where it are is. You, so where, where do you lie on it now? Where are you at this point? Um, and I know that can be, I mean, I've gone through that and I still go through it and it can yeah. change from even day to day. So where are you at today? <laughs> yeah. The, um, well, I, I mean, I think part of it is just the events in the world right now are, are kind of diminishing the scale of how it feels. I also, I think yeah. there was a sort of a greater, you know, when you're younger, you're kind of more narcissistic in a sense, right? As you mm -hmm. get older, you become <laughs> more uh, attuned to the world and less so. But, um, and I think when, you know, when you're younger, you, you feel a greater importance to what you're doing. As as I've gotten yeah. older, I just I feel a little more like, well, we're all doing stuff, we're all getting along. This is, you know, this this kind of petri dish, you know, <laughs> and um, you know, it's it's going to keep going on when you're gone, and blah blah blah, and and this is just art is a product of human culture, and so on and so on. Um, so I, I don't I don't feel like uh, as much of a magical awe about it, like that. There's it it feels okay I'm put this it feels like it's more of a um outgrowth of the culture um 
but it has an emotional component. Okay. Okay, we got there. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a great summation, man. <laughs> so, what, what's your uh, what's your position on it now? <laughs> In terms of what is it important? Is it well? I mean, is it, it playing? Is there a magicalness to it uh, still for you, or is it there? It, yeah, it comes and goes. Yeah. I, it like I said for me, I mean, it can literally change um, day to day. Mm -hmm. I think I went through. Um, I've talked about this before, but I, it really hit me out of school. Mm. I went through like, um, a, kind of this two year depression slash battle, um, with art thinking it was mm -hmm. completely meaningless. And I think that was a product of being over schooled, like over, yeah. over technique. It took all that magic out right. for me. Right. But, um, I don't know, for me, I found, and especially dealing with like when I started getting into this mindset of just becoming more atheist about things, I found for some weird reason I had to find very simple answers for bigger questions. Mm. And so like for the art thing, what finally did it for me is it's just part and parcel to the human condition. And that was enough for me yeah. to give it meaning and to, you know, and even meaning now in a, in a time where, we're, you know, we're inundated with information and images Right. It, for me, it becomes even harder. It's like, God, why should, why should I do this? Right. There's 5 million other people. Doing exactly. That. Yeah. And most yeah. of them are doing it better. So what's right. the fucking point, man? Right. Or you put something uh, out, they rip it off. You know? yeah, so, yeah, that yeah, too. Yeah. Oh yeah. man, I have a good, man. I don't know if I should talk about this. Yeah, we can really talk off there. I got, I got <laughs> okay, a good yeah, one yeah. too. <laughs> 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 um, but, um, yeah, just that simple fact. Like I, I, I became really interested in cave art. It's still kind of my, mm favorite art yeah it's amazing some of those is you know you look at some of those pieces you're like wow that guy could really draw <laughs> like, yeah. yeah they are dude, technically but... amazing yeah yeah and yeah and even in terms of shading and things but then when you look at some of them like they had to crawl in this cave on their belly for like you know half a mile and they That's could have died commitment. going in here <laughs> yeah and why so what's the purpose and yeah. the, what it comes down to is whatever their reason was yeah we don't know but it's always been a part of us. That was the first language was image. What if they were just high and like, dude, let's I've go make some art. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't put that back in my head. I thought about that one time. I was like, oh man, they just took mushrooms. Yeah, it's like, like, hey dude, like, yeah, Jeff was like, hey man, check this out. This is crazy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there goes the magic again. Or it's just like taggers <laughs> are like screwing up some other guy's work, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> They're little tagger yeah. names from different <laughs> tribes. <You're> right. <laughs> uh, yeah, see, there is no magic in the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So, did you have a? Did you grow up with a religious background? Because you, I did actually. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. Not not completely like not fundamental, but I yeah I went to Catholic school for the first like six years of my schooling was Catholic, yeah. and it was a very. Um, so I always see Catholics uh, as different than like. A lot of Christians, because they, they have more of like better parties. I mean, they're just <laughs> better art, better parties. <laughs> yeah. but they're heavier on the guilt that's true. than the Christians are. And man, were we thrown into the guilt. Yeah. Yeah. Holy shit. It took a long time for me to shed it. Yeah. And outside of that, there was, I'm sorry, now I'm just kind of like going through a mental list. I, oh, I sure, try sure. to make this as free flowing as possible, but there was one thing. Cause I, I remember I, I saw it, um, like a week ago, I was going through your Instagram again and um, you did this, uh, a prosthetic for Halloween. It was like a few years ago. Oh, for the Wounded Warriors Project, one of those? I it's think, got like I a crazy know. face on it. Yeah, it's like yeah. this elongated <laughs> cylinder. What the hell is that? It's so crazy. So it was this guy, he was doing, um, it was a charity auction. It was like, uh, okay. I think for Wounded Warriors or something, like vets who needed prosthetics or whatever. And so they were doing this auction where they, they had all these old, um, you know, like, I don't know, World War One, nineteen twenties through forties, like era uh, prosthetics, and they just uh -huh. sent them to a bunch of artists, and you know, we painted them and sent it back. And I was like, I, I don't know what to do with this thing, but it was like, I just, uh, you know, it's, it, it had so many like weird taped on things, and I just like made this kind of crazy, crazy uh, looking dude. <laughs> so, yeah, it is um, with all the teeth. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's. No, uh, and something like that, like, so you're, you're still pretty comfortable working out of your head because I assume most of that was completely from yeah, imagination. Yeah, I, I uh, pretty much, I, it's funny because I, I, you know, I went through the whole thing of drawing from life and, um, 
And I felt like for probably 10 years, like I had to draw from life, you know, and I just, it kind of bored me after a while, you know, like working that way. Sure. Yeah. Um, and I, I'd always in my sketchbooks, I draw out of my head and I, uh, I pretty much prefer to work that way. I mean, I'm with the chimps. I might start with a little bit of reference, like around the eyes and the nose mouth, mm-hmm. but then it's all out of my head. So I, I, I actually don't use much reference at all anymore. So probably for a long time now. Oh, wow. Yeah. But it's it's much more fun. I mean, in a way, it takes longer to do a painting, but it's just a much more interesting process because you're kind of like, there's always a challenge, right? Like, how does that actually, how is that supposed to actually look in, in the world, right? Yeah, so, yeah. And is part of it, okay, because that's something I, I've been really finding fascinating for myself because I'm kind of, I feel like I'm hitting a roadblock again. Mm. And I'm wondering how much of it is me going back to references. Well, now, there, do you do you draw from life, and then I mean, you abstract obviously as well. Mm-hmm. But but are you working from a live model, or is it mostly not anymore? No, from oh, photos. Okay. I see. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it, for me, I mean, you know how it is at the academy. I drew so many years from life. Yeah. That I know the trappings of a photo, but I'm not good at making things up out of my head. Mm-hmm. And I still try to do it, but. I'm more interested now in going no references at all and just working Mm. from imagination for me. And I'm wondering if this is part of it for you um, because I'm lately I've been thinking a lot more just about the images artifact. Yeah. And because we're so inundated with images. So the fact of like, or the act of just making a painting from a photo. So basically mimetics, even if it's kind of loosely painted this and that it is a, you know, mimetics. So that image exists outside of your painting, but when you're making up outside out of your head, mm-hmm. it's one of a kind. That image doesn't exist anywhere else. And there's something, uh, it sounds pretentious to say like philosophically engaging about it, but that's the only way I can think <laughs> of it. You know what I mean? Cause I've been reading a lot, you know, when we're talking about, I, I talk tangentially too, so I'm sorry, oh, sorry. but, um, the simulation theory is very interesting to me on two levels. Like there's a Nick Bostrom thing, but since I've moved to France, I've been reading some of the French philosophers again. Mm-hmm. So like Baudrillard and his idea of, of simulation, which is entirely different. Right. So simulacra and simulation. So even when you're making a painting based of a photo, it's a simulacra. Right. If you do it out of your head, it's completely original. And that kind of has a weird merit to me. And I don't know if that's well, it's almost some... like a synthesis of, of, uh, I, I mean, it, there's almost like a uh, an icon. Uh, it's almost like a psychological icon, I guess, in a way. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it's you, you're almost creating something that I guess it's unique to you, but it's also again going back to that conduit thing. Like, you know, you're kind of synthesizing all the um, well, sort of an iconic image of, of what a human is if you're, if you're drawing a human out of your head or a, mm-hmm. uh, whatever. But, um, I, I mean, it's, yeah, but I mean, it, it is, it's, it's completely, uh, a, I mean, it's unique in, in that sense, right? That it's, that it is yours. Um, I'm sorry, I got off the train of thought here, but, um, yeah, you, you were saying that. Well, because you were saying how it's more, and, and totally agree with that, it's more fun and it's more engaging as, as in, in terms of the act of making it. Yes. But I'm wondering if you think of outside of that, not just that, because that's the technical aspect right, of it. Right, right. But uh, it's a complete image of your own and doesn't exist anywhere else. Right. Well, it, it almost, I mean, to me, it just feels like it's it becomes, a like I was saying, like a kind of a synthesis of... Or uh, you become kind of the sieve, if you will, for oh, okay. everything coming in, and it's going through your psychology, and then coming out on that paper. It's all like, if you will, playing out your demons, you know, and mm-hmm. um, and then you know, if it's more narrative too, um, you, you, kind of how that rolls out, um, that narrative rolls out. You know, you, you can lead to a lot of things of like, oh. What you know? What is uh, what am I seeing in in the world right now? In a sense, right? Of um, maybe I don't. You know, as you're doing it, you don't realize it, but um, looking back, you'll you'll see what's maybe. Yeah, happening. in hindsight, you yeah, see hindsight. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, it, it's kind of a. I, I mean, it's a uh, 
kind of a unconscious process, right? So kind of a surreal mm-hmm. process, I guess. Um, yeah. So I, I uh, you know, it's like if you show, a, it's almost like a Rorschach test, right? You can show the shape to somebody and they'll see something. Oh, that's in, a, right? ah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. really cool. Okay. So, um, but yeah, you know, a little more elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> Rorschach with more detail. Yeah, with detail. Yeah. <laughs> A tiny brush for a shock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, but, uh, nice. Yeah. So, but so, what are you? Uh, are you experimenting with like human faces out of your head, or are you just going totally out of like? Yeah, crazy? just because. No, no, just human faces. Like yeah. sticking with what I know, uh-huh. um, and and kind of working within that in, within that framework um, at yeah. first, because I think it, I want to get away from using uh, reference yeah. as much as I can in the future. Yeah, yeah. No, it's. Uh, I mean, it's and an if, interesting process. Even if, even if you were still, you know, doing your other work, it's uh, just such an interesting process to see what comes out. I mean, true. Yeah, yeah. And especially, it just makes more. I don't know if it really making sense is the the right way to put it, but just in now, like when you think how, like you were saying earlier, um, but I'm going to paraphrase it because my <laughs> caffeinated. I never brain said that. <laughs> I'll just edit something in and post. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Me trying to imitate your voice. <laughs> right, <yeah. laughs> but I mean, like, um, as, as, like, as your work, like reflecting the culture, like now that again, it just goes back, man, I'm just so inundated with images on a daily basis that it, it's almost depressing to me to work from an image now. I'm just like, man, I just want to get away from looking and referencing images all the time. Cause you're seeing that yeah. in Paris, they've been doing like one of my favorite things moving here is there was no billboards anywhere. Huh. So yeah, or very little. Yeah. So it's in that, that was the first thing I noticed when I went back to the U S it was like billboard after billboard yeah, after billboard. True, actually, it's just, yeah. yeah, it's visual pollution, but now they're starting to do it. They're putting on okay. every corner. Um, it's clear channel is put and it's even worse, not just a billboard. It's one of those rotating where there's a poster on a roll in there. Oh my so God. you'll get like four advertisements oh, just roll by you, or it's on video. Some of them. Oh. And I'm just like, man, I'm done. I'm done of basically getting my eyes getting raped by clear <laughs> channel, man, you know? So I don't even want that in, in art anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And then I recently went to see Francis Bacon at the, at the Pompidou mm-hmm. and, um, that was really yeah. inspiring. Yeah. That's amazing. I saw, uh, the Bacon show when it was at the, um, at the Legion a long time ago. Oh, nice. And it was just one of the best shows I've ever seen. It's really it's, one of your favorites. Oh yeah. I think of, nice. yeah, it was, I, I think I went back three times cause it was just every time there was just so much to you know, explore in the paintings. Just the, yeah, 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 yeah. It was, it was great. Yeah, no, but it's it's true. There's there's a uh, there's so many. You know, I mean, because of Instagram and Facebook, and it's just constant. You know, I mean, you think back before that. I mean, you walk down the street. Okay, you got visual images, but you didn't have all this photography over and over again. Everybody's fucking feed and yeah, you know, and, uh, advertising, blah blah blah, all the time, and it's um. Yeah, it, it is interesting how, you, it, like, so yeah, you do a painting of a photograph. Is it, <laughs> is it just adding to that and kind of getting swallowed up in the mix? I mean, yeah. I know, what even you, if you change things a little bit, did yeah. you just double the noise in the world? Or yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, there is this whole thing, like, like what you do and what Christina does with this disrupted realism that, you know, where it's kind of a fracturing in a sense of, of mm-hmm. the world. Yeah. And, and so you kind of make a comment on that. It, so, I mean, it's, that's important. And I, I don't know. Um, so I don't think, I mean, I, I think there's definitely, it's, it's, a um, you know, an important way to, to handle it. I think, um, it's, it's, it's to kind of talk about what, what's right in front of you all the time. Right. Those photographs. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. As commentary. For, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's funny. I, I don't know what I would do with it, with 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 the photographs now, because I, I felt like when I when I used to paint, I, I just got so locked into uh, whatever the still life or the portrait or the photograph was, and I it it was very hard for me to break away from it. Like I would start, and then I'd have to put it away. Um, mm. But um, yeah, anyway, anyways, kind of, I'm kind of off topic here a little bit. So, no, no, no. Yeah. Um, 
but it's uh i think with the uh you know going out, working out of my head it, it definitely did free me up um and it's um and so i, I mean i say it's more fun or it's it's uh, uh you know, it, it's just more enjoyable to me, but I think part of that is just because it, it does free me up. I can kind of go in any direction or I can go down a direction I, I want to with a narrative or whatever um, and not have to go like, well, that doesn't work if, because I would need to put in, you know, this thing here and it has to make perfect sense with the lighting and da, 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 you know, that kind of Wait stuff a minute, is You're gone. just going back to your Berkeley instructor now. Yeah, right. She, she <laughs> yeah, was right. right. She was right. <laughs> she was right. I know. She's, <laughs> she's gone full circle. <laughs> You need to write her an email. And yeah. Apologize. <laughs> After all these years, you were right. Who cares about light source? What Spent about my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I see what you mean. Yeah, there's truth to that. Yeah. But so you're liking living in Paris, though. You're overall. Or? I, I do. I, I. I mean, I think at this point, um, you know, at the th- almost three year mark. Yeah. Um, it's. I'm starting to understand why they go on vacation all the time. <laughs> it gets a little gloomy this time of year. It's been yeah. a little. I'm, I'm prone to the, cause I'm a California boy. Yeah. Uh, I'm prone to a little seasonal depression. Right, right. And, uh, you can only rely on cheese to make you happy for so long. Oh, so such great cheese here. Oh my God. It's the best, <laughs> huh? Oh man. I swear it's one of the things that keeps me here. I mean, I <laughs> uh, so is, is like in Paris, I mean, do you, is it good for ours? I mean, is there a lot of, studio spaces and like a pretty strong no. art community. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> no, no one all counts. It's, oh. it's like, um, I mean, there isn't, there isn't, it's, I don't know how Berlin is, but, um, it's, it's like 90, 95% still street art here. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, the studios are fairly hard to come by. We completely lucked out on price and availability and location. Huh. Um, but yeah, I, I was really shocked how little, no, that's not the right way to say it. Just how small the painting community is here. Whoa. So it's not what I expected. And, and yeah. you know, it is what it is, but I'm happy just that I, for me right now, the, the general location just in terms of Europe is very strategically satisfying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, especially, and you know, it's like a West coast. It's like, man, the first time I went into, um, to Brussels, you know, it's like, what? An hour and a half? This is crazy. I know. Isn't it weird? <laughs> It take me four times that long to go to LA, yeah, from San Francisco. Yeah. Oh no, we were looking. At, I, I we moved here, and I didn't even realize. Like, like I've always wanted to go to Prague. I still haven't gone, but yeah. <laughs> so I'm like looking at the map, going like, oh, it's just two hours away, okay, <laughs> or three yeah, hours right? away. Like, yeah, yeah. What the hell? So, yeah, it's uh, yeah. I mean, we go up to Copenhagen sometimes, and it's, it's like driving to LA. It's like it's great, but. With a much better payoff. With a much better payoff, definitely. <laughs> Great pastries. And <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, well, it's interesting. I mean, there's, there are studio spaces here, but I, I it's changed quite a bit. Um, you know, from, I guess, even 10 years ago, it's, it's, everything's moving further and further out. There's more tech coming in. So it's kind of like San Francisco in the early 2000s, I guess. Man, what and a that, bummer. Yeah. But it's, um, it's still very, you know, livable and very, there's still studio spaces to be found and whatnot. And, um, although it's interesting when we were looking for studio spaces, a lot of places would say like, uh, you know, art studio available. And then you'd go and you'd see it and they'd be like, Oh, you know, no fumes. We don't want any fumes. I'm like, Jesus. And everybody's on a computer, right? And I'm like, oh, this yeah, is like yeah. the new era. <laughs> Damn it. Yep. I'm a dinosaur. Yeah, yeah. That's how it's <laughs> getting here. Yeah. 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 It's like, this is no, art has to be on canvas. <laughs> yeah, with fumes, lots of yeah. them that will kill you. <laughs> yeah, that's how it is in, in my, as good as our studio spaces, there's two, maybe three that are working on computers, two of them solely on computers. Wow. Yeah. And so yeah, I almost start to feel bad. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> Jesus. I know. Well, this is going to kill you, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's also like the, I mean, you don't think of it as being very physical, right? Because you're like gestuating a canvas or you're moving stuff mm, around, yeah. right? But you're doing all that in a, in a studio. You know, it makes a little bit of noise. And if everybody's on a computer, yes. you start to feel like, oh, I, I don't mean to. I hope I'm not disrupting anybody. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. But yeah, I mean, it's I, the studio I found is everybody's really cool there. So I, uh, I really nice. like it. But um, but yeah, some some places we saw it was just like, 
uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like a, everything is becomes a WeWorks or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But, but, uh, Man. So I, I do have one generic question. So I've tried to avoid these as much as possible. <laughs> But um, your, just because I'm, is I it get like curious. a signature generic question? No, 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 it's not, no, I don't have one of those. Sorry, I don't no. know if that's good or bad not to. Um, no, I just get curious, like with certain people's works and certain artists, like what, like it, it, because we're you know we're to, it's going back to the images. Like I find for myself, like what may motivate me changes too quickly, or not looking at artists motivates me. Um, but you know, is being in Europe for you, like, cause now for me, it's like, I, I can go to the Dorsey or I go to the Pompidou right. and I'm, I'm becoming more motivated by actual paintings again. Hmm. And, you know, specifically like bacon has been a big one for me. Like yeah. what I, I'm curious for you since being here, like who are there certain artists that you're into? Is there certain types of art that's been motivating you? Yeah, we, um, we, uh, you know, we we're not too far away from, uh, the Gemelda gallery, which is like all the, old masters from uh, mm -hmm. early Renaissance, you know, and uh, so some Bruegels they've got, you know, oh, you nice. name it. I mean, it's like old master works, but like some of their better ones too. And, <laughs> and nobody's in there during the week. It's great. Um, nice. But I saw, um, Oh God, I can't remember his name now. What the hell? It was the burn. Oh, that's embarrassing. Um, <laughs> it's cool, man. I can edit it out. Yeah. <laughs> We saw this guy's work. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh starts with an M. Anyway. <laughs> okay. I uh, you can just put this in after, like just put the voiceover <laughs> for me. <laughs> yeah. Me uh, mimicking your yeah. voice. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, anyways, we, the, that show in particular, um uh you know, it's some of the works were just you know, just so beautiful, you know, and so just I kind of delicacy of the sensitivity to the rendering um in in the work uh it was a bernini and uh uh oh, this is terrible oh the sculptor no i'm sorry not uh bellini and um oh, okay yeah, yeah and oh uh, i'll have to look this up for you <laughs> i, I got my mind think about blank it, right, right yeah. now no. anyway but yeah we've seen i mean we've seen some shows in, in that um era i mean that that always is kind of you know, when it's, when it's really well done, you know, and just that kind of delicate softness that, you know, where things just kind of, you know, starts from the light side into the dark side and just kind of delicately fades into it, you know, it's just yeah, nice. beautiful. Um, Is that kind of your general wheelhouse of what you prefer to look at? Uh, no, I mean, I, I like a lot of uh, things, but I, I think that particular show was, was really inspiring. I think the, oh, okay. uh, um, you know, of recent times, um, but it's, yeah, I mean, I like to go see a lot of stuff. I mean, I love, like, I'm, I'm waiting for if there's a Neil Rausch painting that shows up around here that I can go take a look at. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's a, there's a show of uh, Mo, uh, Mobius, uh, the cartoon artist. Oh, yeah, I, I want to yeah. go see that. And it's like, um, you know, there's there's a lot of things I, that I do like to see. I don't know how much, um, I, I mean, I kind of feel like I'm doing my thing, you know, right now. So I, I don't know if it's nothing's mm -hmm. like really kind of knocking me off my, off the, my chair and going like, Oh, okay, this is what yeah, I need to go in that direction or whatever. Um, but it's, you know, some of, some of the times you just see a painting and it's just like, wow, you know, it's just so like, that's when you get that kind of religious feeling, right? Where yeah. Like, wow. Yeah. No, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's, um, yeah, there, there's, there's some, show. I mean, the thing is here, there's like, I think there's, I mean, 200 museums or something in this city plus galleries. And it's, I mean, a lot of museums Damn. are not necessarily, I mean, there's some great painting and uh, technical museum and whatnot. There's also right. like the David Hasselhoff museum, but it's, you know. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. Why aren't you there now? I know. Well, that's, hey. <laughs> How could he have, what is it, just Baywatch and Knight Rider? Like what else does he have? <laughs> Well, I think they have the shorts or something like that from, oh, okay. uh, yeah, from, from Baywatch. His, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's a pretty small museum, but um, I'll, yeah, I'll check it out. I'll tell you. That just <laughs> went up on my list of things to see when I go to Berlin. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, they, they got some crazy ones, but you know, they, but then they have things like you know the Stasi Museum and whatnot, spy museum and what. 
stuff, but yeah, cool. That's yeah. very cool. Yeah. Is it, do you think for you, um, cause it, one thing coming here for me was it, it definitely kind of, I don't want to say it's like a, a restart button was pushed, but there was definitely kind of this flood of inspiration that mm. hit me just, just being in Europe in general, it was just away from the politics was number one of the U S even yeah. though there's some shit going on here, but not quite like over there on that side of the pond. Right. Um, right. but just the museums and even, um, like I remember we last year we went and saw the, the Basquiat museum at the uh, Louis Vuitton foundation. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there was like a two week wait to wow. get into there. And even that kind of inspires me just that people it's, it's still part of the culture, That's you know, great, to go yeah. out and see museums. Do you, was there anything like that for you? Like you were, you, you revived in any sense or. Um, I, you know, when we got here, there was so much, um, to do as far as finding a place to live and uh, just getting the paperwork uh, and the yeah, whole, yeah. you know, immigration and blah, blah, blah. Um, and then I had, <clears throat> I had a show to do. <laughs> I had a, only a few months to get it ready. And um, so, I, I mean, it was just kind of like, it was really stressful actually the first year. So um, wow. it was just trying to get through everything. But, but since then, um, you know, I've been, yeah, you know, again, going to some of the museum shows and and just kind of feeling like I'm starting to live again. And nice, I think, yeah, I, I feel like for the last ten years in the states, it was just stress and you know problems. And then we moved, and you know, I just, it feels like. I mean, I, I don't know what you find, but I feel like it's coming here. It's like, oh, this is how you're kind of supposed to live. You know, yes, exactly. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. It was just crazy. I, it's. I mean, I look back on it now, and I didn't realize it. But it was insane. And when we went back for in September, you know, I could just feel my stress level going up and the cackles yes. on the back of my neck standing up, you know, just um, cackles, hair, hair on the back of my neck. <laughs> <laughs> I um, understand. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and uh, it's just, uh, you know, it's just even just the fact that in general, most people don't. You know, most crimes here have, you know, if there's a gun involved, you know, it's like a big thing. <laughs> you know, it's like you watch yeah, these. Yeah, people are shocked. Yeah, yeah. Collect. Like, like when you watch movies from Europe or, or TV series from Europe, if they're detective series or whatever, and like there's a crime with a gun, it's like, yeah. wow, <laughs> you know, big fucking deal. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. And if the US, if it doesn't have one, they don't want to watch it. Right. There's right. no guns. Yeah. This is yeah. stupid. Yeah. He's not, he's not aiming it sideways. <laughs> What's the point? Right? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, you know, but even that, I mean, you just sense that, you know, at least right when I get back in the States, I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Tension. tension. Yeah. yeah. Just that, that kind of background tension. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's really nice. I mean, I think that kind of fr has freed me up to, yeah, be more, um, you know, less stressed in a way that I can just kind of work, um, without having to, I don't know, kind of have that background tension. Although then right. I have to turn on open Facebook or turn on the news and that, you know, no, see can't get shit. away from it completely, man. No, no. Jeez. <laughs> so nice. Yeah. Well, I think that's a, a perfect place to end it, man. But, um, yeah, it was really awesome. I, I hope the conversation was all right for you. Oh yeah. 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 I know. Well, Always a little nervous on these things, but <laughs> oh, man. hope I didn't ramble too much. <laughs> no, no, no. It was a good conversation, man. I really appreciate you uh, taking the time. It's good to catch up. I mean, I hope yeah. uh, next time it's in person. It yeah, feels yeah. a little impersonal. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry I had to hit you up like this in order to catch up. Oh, no, no. It's cool. my excuse now. Because um, Now you have I mean, to come to Berlin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm like, okay, go to Berlin. We'll hang out in person. Yeah. But uh, I really appreciate it, man. Yeah, yeah. No, likewise. Lo-Fi Sight and Sound Podcast is an American artist living in Paris, France, in conversation with artists, musicians, and filmmakers discussing context, the creative process, and studio practice. You can find us on all streaming platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. Also at www.lofipodcast.com, no hyphens. Please rate and review. It helps more than you know. If you can't rate and review, then please share this with a friend. Lo-Fi Podcast is recorded, mixed, and edited by myself. Intro music is also by me. Thank you for listening.